Oh my goodness, I nearly destroyed that mirror. The dual scope rig is just here. Come with me. Here we are. This is the dual scope rig. Just doing a quick test build to make sure everything fits together. The new 3D printed dew shield is here and um, I've kind of built it all. The next challenge is going to be to get these two scopes to look at the same thing. I thought I'd show you the 3D printing of the dew shield. Don't look away. Keep watching. Still here. There we go, the finished print. Looking pretty cool. And it took 33 hours and 13 minutes. This is the dew shield. So we have the effective lens cap, which will fit on there. This bit slots onto the telescope and there's a little slot just there for the cable to the dew heater on the secondary mirror and then this will be glued onto there like that. You may ask the question why not just 3D print all of that in one go? Very good question and the reason is I, and the reason is that this takes a long time to print so that was 33 hours. This one was about 12 to 13 hours and that one was about seven hours so I designed this first so that I could make sure that I was making something the correct size in order to fit on a 130 PDS. I will put all of these files these three files onto Thingiverse and then if you guys wish to print your own go for it. My printer is quite slow but if you have a faster printer, it will obviously be quicker. But do bear in mind, so it's about 33 plus the 15, 16 hours plus seven hours. It's a long print, but it's pretty good. And it's not too heavy. So it just glues together. You just use super glue or cyanoacrylate, exactly the same stuff. But you will see that there is some shiny bits in there from the stepper motor steps as it goes round. So this has to be flocked as well. And also you need to put some flocking material on the sides here so that will stay in. So obviously it's loose without that. So you flock in the inside and then you put a little bit of flocking material around so it's effectively a friction fit. And this as well, put some flocking material in there so it nicely fits on your telescope. And that's it, one 3D printed dew shield. I just made a huge mistake. I forgot that this actually goes through here, the cable goes through. And as I removed this, this swung across and just tapped the side of the mirror. I am so lucky I did not chip the side of the mirror 
at all. It's absolutely perfect. Oh my goodness, I nearly destroyed that mirror and I'd have had to buy a new one, which would have been a nightmare. Anyway, gosh, that was really lucky. Oh well, accidents happen. Right, so a bunch of you have asked me how well has a 3D printed spider held up in the weather? I have to say it's held up far better than the original spider which was fitted on this and the scope keeps its collimation which is what this is all about. So this has been a total triumph. It's just PLA and it's rock solid, absolutely rock solid. If it was in the Sahara Desert and it was really hot, it would probably warp. But I'm in the UK and it's flipping freezing most of the time. So therefore, I have to say this has been absolutely brilliant for me. And I am incredibly lucky that I did not just smash the corner of that mirror. So I'm going to put this safe now. There we go, that's everything removed. What I'm going to do now, um, my slightly dusty telescope, because it's not been used for a week or two, you can see it has no flocking material in. So I am now going to flock this tube and also flock the new 3D printed one, and that's the original 3D printed one. And you can instantly see the difference that's been flocked. This one has not. So you can see the difference that the flocking material makes. Effectively, it stops reflections. The way I measured this, I got my flocking material, which is this stuff here, and I wrapped it over the telescope like this. And then I brought up the other side and I just fitted it with about a centimeter overlap or so. And that took me to about this five line here. So following that along to somewhere around here. So I'm just going to double check that and then I'll cut along this line. And luckily with a 130 PDS, this is exactly the right length to fit inside here, leaving an inch either end, which is where the spider and the primary mirror will fit. So you can see it's the perfect size for this particular scope, this stuff. Just there, that's where the circle of metal is joined there at this seam. So I'm going to follow this seam with the flocking material all the way along there as a kind of marker, which allows me to align the flocking material perfectly within the tube. just lined it up with the seam just there and I'll start to peel off the backing material and then I'll stick it down in small amounts just going around the whole tube. I've just remembered something. It's much easier to flock a telescope without the focuser on or the finder scope bracket. I think I will take those off too. There we go, flocked tube. Just got to put some more flocking material around there. And then that tube is properly flocked.
these are the two 130 PDSs. They are pretty much identical now. All I've got to do is put the dew heater on the base here, fit the dew heater to the secondary mirror and collimate both of the scopes. And then we're done. That's it. That's the build complete. So the next step is how do we get these two pointing at the same object? Now, somebody suggested something very interesting. Laser pointers. And I don't know how effective this is going to be, but basically we have a laser and another laser just here. And somebody suggested mounting two laser pointers on the scopes. I don't know, something like that. Or maybe on the finder shoe bracket, 3D printing something so that that there, if you put it on the other finder shoe bracket, which is just here, and then had them permanently switched on and then pointed this at an object such as the shed over there, you could then potentially adjust this so that both laser pointers were pointing at the same object. I thought that was quite a clever idea. I've got these two dovetails here and theoretically you could mount them like that in a very crude fashion and when you switch them both on you could see whether they are pointing at the same subject and if they're not you could adjust the mounting. This is going to be the hardest part of this entire project, getting these two scopes to point at the same part of space. Mm -hmm.